Please welcome APAC Managing Director for Policy and Politics, Arnie Christensen. Good evening. The year was 1995. A popular comedy about six friends living in New York had just entered its second season. The 49ers, led by Steve Young, won the Super Bowl. And Tom Hanks got the Oscar for Best Actor for Forrest Gump. Google wasn't a verb yet. And several thousand of our delegates weren't even born yet. That same year, APAC worked with Congress to pass the Jerusalem Embassy Act, which required the President to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. That's right. That effort began more than 20 years ago. Now, at the time, I was a young, well, at least a younger staffer, working for then-Speaker Newt Gingrich, the sponsor of the bill. And my staff counterpart on the other side of the aisle was a guy named Rob Bassett, who worked for Democratic sponsor Congressman John Lewis. That October, Congress passed the bipartisan bill by an overwhelming margin. But as we all know, that wasn't the end of the story. Far from it. Presidents of both parties delayed the decision to move the embassy, and AIPAC continued to push for action over the course of 10 congressional elections and more than two decades. And then, President Trump decided a little over a year ago to end the delay and finally move our embassy to Jerusalem. And the embassy was open just last April, and we saw years of activism result in success. 22 years later, an idea had become a reality. Oh, and as you know, Rob Bassin and I, 22 years later, we're working together at APAC every day. So my message today is very simple. You can't have real impact with a temporary commitment. Shaping policy, promoting legislation, educating leaders, all of that takes time. The U.S.-Israel relationship depends upon the long-term investment of pro-Israel activists. So whether it's ensuring that Israel can defend herself by herself, responding to Iran's aggressions, fighting efforts to boycott Israel, all of this happens because of what you are willing to do year after year. And it depends upon what you're going to do this Tuesday when you head to Capitol Hill and the conversations continue. So it's my pleasure now to introduce my colleagues here to review what those conversations will be about. Please welcome me in, in please join me in welcoming Apex Marvin Foyer, Esther Kurtz, and David Gillette. Thank you, Arnie. Good evening, everyone, whoever's left. Uh, today, Israel faces heightened threats on its northern and southern borders, as well as from international efforts to isolate the Jewish state. Connected for good, America and Israel can and must address these and other threats. Because we know the United States and Israel are stronger when they work together. This year's lobbying agenda is focused on three core issues that will strengthen both nations in the years ahead. First, providing much-needed security assistance. Second, strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship to help both countries flourish in times of peace while better preparing for future emergencies. And finally, putting Congress on, formally on record in opposition to discrimination and boycotts against the Jewish state. Which brings us to our first message for Congress. The United States must support vital security assistance to Israel within a robust overall foreign aid bill. 
For those of you who have attended policy conferences in the past, this message should sound familiar. This is the foundation of our work together, ensuring the United States fulfills its commitment <clears throat> to help Israel defend itself by itself. Annual security assistance to Israel is the most tangible manifestation of American support for the Jewish state. But this support is not guaranteed, nor is it self-fulfilling. For decades, American leaders have understood that it's in the national interest of our country that Israel has the resources it needs to respond decisively to the many challenges it faces. Israel is our sister democracy. It is the only nation in the Middle East that shares American values. Moreover, the United States depends on Israel as our one stable ally in the Middle East. Both countries share intelligence, technology, and so much more. As instability grips the Middle East, Israel faces growing security threats, requiring it to invest more on defense as a percentage of GDP than any other nation in the industrialized world. Israel relies on our help to address near-term threats like Iran's military entrenchment in Syria and rockets from Hezbollah and Hamas, as well as longer-term threats like a nuclear-armed Iran. So on Tuesday, we will ask lawmakers to support $3.3 billion in security assistance to Israel and $500 million in cooperative missile defense funding. Beyond this aid to Israel, we will urge Congress to support a robust overall foreign aid bill as an essential element of America's national security strategy. At just 1% of the federal budget, foreign aid is a cost-effective and relatively small investment that saves U.S. taxpayer money by helping prevent costly wars, crises, and disasters. This brings us to our second message for Congress, strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship to help both countries seize shared opportunities and address common threats. For this message, we have two asks in the House and one thank you and one ask in the Senate. First, in the House, we will urge representatives to co-sponsor the bipartisan U.S.-Israel Cooperation Enhancement and Regional Security Act authored by Representatives Ted Deutsch and Joe Wilson. In the Senate, great friends of Israel, we will thank senators who supported a similar bipartisan pro-Israel bill that passed last month. And lastly, we will also urge both senators and representatives to sign a bipartisan, bicameral letter authored by Senators Risch and Menendez and Representatives Engel and McCall on Iran's regional aggression. The House bill includes three important provisions. The first major provision addresses the issue of emergency resupply, ensuring that America could rapidly step in and supply Israel with emergency provisions in a time of crisis. The second major provision promotes increased U.S.-Israel bilateral cooperation as well as multilateral cooperation with like-minded countries, specifically in areas such as agriculture, water scarcity, alternative fuel technology, and cybersecurity. As global leaders in innovation and humanitarian assistance, the United States and Israel are uniquely positioned to share their know-how to help improve the lives around the world. The third and final major provision authorizes five years of the U.S.-Israel Memorandum of Understanding on Aid and strengthens security cooperation with Israel in many other areas. <clears throat> These are the three important provisions included in the House bill. Emergency resupply, bilateral and multilateral cooperation, and security assistance. On Tuesday, 
we will urge House members to support H.R. 1837, the U.S.-Israel Cooperation Enhancement and Regional Security Act. On the Senate side, we will thank senators who supported the Strengthening America's Security in the Middle East Act of 2019, also known as S-1, the first bill introduced in the Senate this year. S-1, which passed with an overwhelming bipartisan majority, pledges security assistance to Israel over the next 10 years and clarifies that local and state governments have the right to counter boycotts of Israel. In addition to these bills, we will ask both representatives and senators to sign a bipartisan, bicameral letter urging the administration to implement a vigorous strategy to counter Iran's malign activities in the region and back Israel's right to self-defense. Now let's turn to our third and final message for Congress, pushing back against discriminatory efforts to boycott the Jewish state. Ever since Israel's founding in 1948, its enemies have attempted to diplomatically and economically isolate and discriminate against the Jewish state. Today, these efforts can be seen through the anti-Semitic Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions movement, also known as BDS. This malicious movement uses double standards against the Jewish state to demonize it and challenge its very right to exist. BDS also hurts U.S. companies and American consumers, which benefit greatly from cooperation with Israeli companies and from using Israeli technology. The BDS movement claims to promote peace and human rights, but nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, BDS makes peace more difficult to achieve by relieving Palestinians of the need to negotiate with Israel and by promoting one-sided demands that forego any expectation of compromise. Rather than promoting human rights, the BDS movement singles out only one party to the conflict for criticism, while ignoring true human rights violations around the world, including those by the Palestinians themselves. The BDS movement is nothing more than the latest effort by Israel's enemies to destroy the Jewish state. To destroy the state by driving a wedge between Israel and the rest of the world. Attempting to separate Israel's government, businesses, universities, and people from their partners abroad. And Congress must stand up in firm and unequivocal, unequivocal opposition to this insidious movement. On Tuesday, we will ask both senators and representatives to co-sponsor bipartisan anti-BDS resolutions. The resolutions will put Congress on record as opposing BDS, which hurts Americans and makes a two-state solution harder to achieve. The resolutions are co-authored by Senators Cardin and Portman and Representatives Schneider and Zeldin. So this is our path forward providing Israel with much-needed security assistance within a robust overall foreign aid budget. Strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship now and into the future. And putting Congress on record against discriminatory efforts to boycott the Jewish state. This is our path to preserving the safety and security of Israel and of our nation. And this is your message on Tuesday. And please, don't forget to finalize the details of your lobbying meetings and meet your group leaders. It is essential that you attend your lobbying caucus meeting at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you on Capitol Hill on Tuesday. Thank you very much.